Today I'm making a Sith Wayfinder. Was that Smuggler's Room, Ace Cosplay, and a dozen others have already done this? I would have been original if I hadn't put this project on hold for three months to build spacesuits and TIE Fighters. Great! Now since apparently I'm the last prop maker to do this build, I'm gonna have to do this one completely differently from everybody else, because I don't want to just copy somebody else's tutorial, you know? So I'll be making mine out of resin. For this build, you'll need resin, I already covered that, cardboard, craft foam, paint, silicone, universal mold release, mixing cups, glow-in-the-dark powder, a pyramid, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. First thing I need to do is find a pyramid-shaped object to make a mold out of. You want to be careful when mold making to make sure that you're not recasting something that is currently being sold because that has the potential to undermine another artist's ability to earn a living. So I'm using a paperweight once owned by a 19th century archaeologist who died under mysterious circumstances. So I made a mold of it. Now it is technically recasting, but whoever made this has been dead for, oh, two, three thousand years? So I think we're probably in the clear. And even so, I don't think anybody has a patent on simple geometric shapes. That's right, the Gould. The Gould have a patent on simple geometric shapes. Excuse me while I deal with Apophis' legal team. My neck! I'm not supposed to get ghouls in it! This has been a public service announcement about the dangers of recasting. I actually just made it out of clay using a wire cutting tool. But then I don't get to make Stargate jokes. I mean, I never get to make Stargate jokes. I like to heat up my resin in a bucket of warm water before mixing because it makes for a more even and thorough mix. Just make sure to dry off the containers thoroughly though before pouring because the water will mess with the clarity of the resin. Although I guess it doesn't matter in this particular build because it, it's gonna come out cloudy, I, you'll see. I mix it all together, alternately pouring the cups back into each other a few times because this stuff is so thick that the volume of part A still stuck on the inside of the cup will throw off the mix ratio. When I was satisfied with the evenness of the mix, I poured it into the mold. Two to three days later, I popped it out of the mold. I cleaned off the universal mold release residue so that it wouldn't interfere with the paint job, because it's essentially oil, and then went outside to paint it. Just wanna get some footage of this before I paint it. Uh, th there's no special effects. I don't have any lights hidden anywhere in my palms like I do a lot. This is just from leaving it in the sun for 20 minutes. It's very important that you only do a light dusting because you do want it, you want it to be like cloudy. It's also important that you cover up the labels. There we go. All right, this is a good time to thank my patrons. Those are the names scrolling by right now. Their support is what makes these videos possible, as well as protects the channel's continued existence. <laughs> no ominous overtones in that at all. If you'd like to join them to both help me out and get early access to uploads, there's a link in the video description. Any amount you could contribute allows me to make these builds bigger, higher quality, more elaborate, and more functional, essentially closer to the real thing. So as an example, because it's splotchy, the light is showing through at different intensities. And this is just, this isn't even a totally dark room. This is where do the green screen shots. When I was finished painting, I built the frame. To get the dimensions, I traced the pyramid onto thin cardboard. Then I extrapolated about a quarter inch beyond that because I'm making the frame out of quarter inch craft foam. And so I used that information to design frame templates. I then used those to stencil the frame onto craft foam. I'm drawing with a white paint marker just because I find it easier to see. I cut those out and super glued them together. There's only two complete chevrons, which are locked by the way. The two for the other sides have to be assembled piece by piece because when you get down to this width, the, the scissors will bend the foam while you're cutting. Making them identical to the two that are already glued together will yield a not a true pyramid, like a pyramid that's more rectangular at the base on one side. It's just, it's a drawback of using this particular material. And if you don't want to deal with that, then I'm just using the foam because I happen to have a ton of it on hand. And if this prop ever fell off a shelf, the foam would absorb the shock of the impact because I have had resin props shatter before. I believe I mentioned that a number of other creators have done this build. And if any of these techniques are outside your wheelhouse, then by all means, check out the other builds. You know, combine them and pick what works best for you from each of these. When the edges were done, I connected them with equal length strips of foam. Then I rounded the edges on my belt sander. The base actually should be a little bit wider, so I glued more strips to the outside. The foam has no weight to speak of. You, know, you could sneeze and it would blow off the workbench. So I had to weight down my workpiece with one, two, three blocks? <laughs> 
Do you what? Just spat on my belt sander. I stole them from past Jake. Scoundrel! I shall alert the bobbies! This is why, for the past year, I've been doing all those corny one, two, three block jokes. Because I knew that somewhere were one of my ancestors one, two, three blocks. I mean, I think at the time they're just called machinist blocks. Because one of my ancestors was a machinist. And I'm sure if he knew that I was using his crazy MC Escher one, two, three blocks to screw around with foam, he would be rolling in his grave. This is the thing that I really dig. That's gonna come in handy. Wait a minute. It's a big deal to me, okay? I guess it just goes to show you that good things come to those who have time machines. Because I'm using this layering technique to build up the foam, I have to fill in the seams with Alex Fast Dry. While I wait for that to dry, I'm going to build the part under the base, which will hold the lighting element. I made more templates out of totally cereal box cardboard and cut the base segments. No one who owns a belt sander also owns a nail file. <laughs> Those pieces are at an angle, so I had to sand the edges to be at an angle. Sometimes I wonder why I narrate. Here's some elevator music. Nope. Doesn't work. Stick with narration. I glued those together with more super glue and then I bulked out the base. When I had the shape of the edges completed, I traced a base plate onto another piece of foam. I glued it on, then punched a hole for the LED later using this metal pen casing grip with a serrated edge. <laughs> I cannot believe I did that. I cut out these notches because, you know, that was the continuation of the pattern, you know, to create that little alcove. But you're actually supposed to leave them in. So now I gotta glue them back in. Good job, Jake. So I glued those back in, and when they set, I rounded the edges, this time with a rotary tool, just because you get a little bit more control, I think, anyway. When that was done, I heat sealed the foam with a heat gun. This just prevents paint from getting absorbed into the foam, at least as much as it would without doing this. Then I painted it with texture paint, which I've been experimenting with ever since the Nautilus incident. This is like a sand texture. I painted the pyramid and the base separately because I have yet to put in the glowing elements. You always want to paint outside or at least in a garage because the paint is incredibly toxic. Hence the reason why I sound like a robot right now. I'm wearing my respirator and I'm probably gonna have to do two coats, just sand. When they dried, I did a test fitting. I want to point out a flaw that I know no one would notice if I just kept my mouth shut. But when I mixed this resin pyramid, quite a few bubbles clung to the side. This happened because I mixed the resin too fast, causing bubbles cavitation, and then I poured it too fast, which prevented the bubbles from popping in the pour stream. And normally it would be a huge problem that I would have to solve by sanding and polishing all the sides, but in this case, they actually kind of look like stars, so happy accident, I guess. Before I set this into the frame, I need to put the star map pattern on top of here. To add the map pattern, I used various diameter metal stencils, washers and sauce can lids, it's just washers and pasta sauce can lids, and a thumbtack to scratch concentric rings onto the surface. Then I used a metal straight edge to scratch the longitude latitude space lines the, the space to scratch the space lines i don't know where west is in space see a lot of people are drawing them in black on a clear surface but i think they're supposed to be clear on a blackish surface at least that's how my brain is interpreting it this has the effect of scraping away the paint which will make the map lines glow brighter than the surrounding space in order to get that glow to be as vibrant as possible i'm using uv leds so i took apart one of those led twist lights removed the white led inserted a UV LED, trimmed the excess wire to be a more appropriate length, and reset it. Just for reference, this is a glow-in-the-dark Kyber crystal. I did a limited run of them in my Etsy store. I only have uh, five or six left. Link below. This is charged under, you know, regular house light for a few hours. And here it is with the UV LED. See how it's like radioactive now? I've also used this technique in plutonium props for my Expanse pet nuke. So now I'm gonna apply this to the wayfinder. To get better light spread, I put crumpled up aluminum foil oil inside the base. This will reflect much of the light back up into the pyramid base, at least a lot better than black foam would. I then assembled all the pieces, and that's how you make a Sith GPS. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, you can like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of future uploads, and support me on Patreon if you can. These videos take a long time to make, especially on my current budget, and I'm usually at the mercy of waiting for paint to dry. So in the meantime, you can check out my hundreds, literally hundreds, of past prop and costume tutorials. Seriously, there's like something from every franchise at this point, so I'm sure there's something in there for everybody. Okay, happy crafting. See you later.